It's been called the luxury of hot sauces. This LA duo took an ordinary condiment and turned it into a social media phenomenon with over 20 million in revenue last year. This is Truff. Truff. Let's Let's go. What's up, everyone? Sean Azar here with Matt Skopak. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 42, where we take businesses like Truff and dive into their marketing and business strategies such that you can take these strategies and implement them into your business. Truff started in 2017 yep. by two co-founders, Nick, I'm going to say Nick, Nick Square. Nick and Nick Junior, but let's go with Nick Squared from moving yeah. forward. I love their story. It's actually pretty funny because I've talked about this in the past, um, my previous content. They actually, they, they claim they found or captured the handle at sauce. I'm pretty sure they bought it, which I always claim that IG handles, just like domains, is digital real estate. They took the handle. They didn't know what they're going to do with it. They start posting up. You said celebrities, right? Streetwear and hip hop culture. And then they moved on to posting like food, like basically rappers and celebrities posting food that was drenched in like different sauces or, or different sauces. So they wanted to take it a step further and actually build a brand with it. They started acquiring um, a following. So they were building their audience. We talked about this in the past, like yeah. how FabFitFun does this and so forth. And they came out with Truff, which is a really expensive type of hot sauce compared to the other competitors. Like Frank's Hot. And it actually like reminds that. me of Venice at Floor. It's just like the brand style, the font, and, and so forth. I wouldn't be surprised if they're using the same marketing or the same branding um, yeah. person for this. The black this with part. the gold lettering and the white. Yeah, even the box when people receive it. It's like this, lu- obviously, you, see, you feel that, that, um, that luxury feel and you're, you know, you're yeah. paying big bucks just for like, hot sauce. Retails for like fourteen ninety nine in Whole Foods, they're in Wegmans, they're in numerous other boutiques. They're now around the country too in South Korea, Australia. I think they've really pushed worldwide right now after their initial funding last year. Yeah. And I mean, they're dominating the social media game and that's where we're going to get into. Yeah. But also- I'm going to try it out real quick too. Let's try it out. I have never had this. We're just opening up for yeah. the first time now. Matt's giving me the really hot one. Yeah. So hopefully I could breathe. This might be a bad idea. Stand by. Oh, oh. It's all over my It's all over my shirt right now. Oh, it's actually I mean, I can't breathe. It's like a sauce. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> That's gonna make it worse. Is it? Oh god. It's really spicy. That's just, it's great. It's probably gonna be really good in, with food. How about you try that? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I just had a really almost a tablespoon worth of hot sauce in my mouth. <laughs> and it's not a shirt, but we're good. So sauce actually, you know, that's their IG handle, but it's also, it means, and it's in a slang, you know, in a slang world, I guess, it means like they hip, pop. cool, uh, luxury apparel. So they're, they're also spinning in a way such that they're working with streetwear brands and so forth. Like you never even hear that, like a hot sauce working with streetwear brands. They, they also do have a background They probably got this handle by accident. They were trying to create like a hip hop probably like page and they thought they went with the slang sauce and then they're like, wow, people, then they probably just. Well, it wasn't by accident. It was definitely bought. No, definitely bought. But I think they bought bought it for a different purpose than to actually launch the sauce. Yeah, I mean, this is, but they saw the relationship and let's actually get into the points because that's going to be one of your points. I will. So number one, why don't you go? Yep. Try running a contest to grow engagement. And this is something they did really cool. So they elected to use TikTok as the platform for this contest. And they basically had different types of criteria where uh, you had to use the hashtag how I truff contest. And then I believe you also had to use the official truff soundtrack in the video. Um, Great for branding. Yeah, we, we've talked about that, create a song. Um, Sean's not with his brand before, uh, Reborn. So this is a great, uh, way so the contest was a ten thousand dollars prize for the best video slash recipe and then they also donated ten thousand dollars to the whole planet foundation they matched the reward and this was almost specifically for foodie like big foodie accounts which when we did the b-roll when we looked through like who did this it was mostly huge foodie accounts. well i think they used foodie accounts that had a big following to get the word out there to Could, create exactly. that engagement so other people could learn about yep. the contest and acquire truff and create their own recipes. 
Exactly. And and let me say, TikTok is basically, it's going to take over probably by the end of 2021 as the biggest social platform on the internet. It's it's just because it's worldwide. You don't they, think Reels going to, you know, just like how Snapchat, like IG stories took think, over Snapchat. I think TikTok, TikTok is it. They're, they're already catching up to Instagram numbers now. And right. that age bracket, usually everyone knows TikTok, not everyone will, until you know, the TikTok age is usually from 15 to about 30, 32. So that if you have a item or a product that is fits into that like age group, you need to be on TikTok. Yeah, and it, the engagement level, just through the reach of you know TikTok. I actually saw an interview with Adam Mosseri. I believe he's the product development. I don't know his, his title, Instagram, and he was show, he was talking discussing a lot of the the benefits or what they're trying to catch up with TikTok and TikTok does have that organic reach of like Huge. it's great for new creators to stand out. Yeah. So that's how people like Instagram are, are great for people that already establish themselves. It, it basically takes the technology of the lookalike audience from Facebook and implements it into a social platform of people now watching videos. So it's, it's what they did. They've literally, I think they had over 50, about $15 million a million views of just that hashtag. That hashtag, awareness great, great so. brand awareness. So if you could think about a way of getting people to use your hashtag like they did, and create some so, sort of incentive, like $10,000, it's gonna go a long way. Another brand, so I don't wanna go too deep on this, did this is, um, I think it's First Form, is that by Andy Frisella? Is, is it that first, a supplement brand, yeah, First Form? For, is it I first, think so. He did this a long time before I even heard of Andy Frisella. He was, the brand was a nothing. I remember, I, I remember getting his email campaign, a $10,000 giveaway, or like they were giving, uh, to give a model to be featured on their site. They did this whole campaign, it went viral, and actually the brand is doing really well now. What I was doing is I just had a great idea about my own contest, so I wanted to write down the hashtag, just because if I don't write it down right away, it disappears forever. That's the way you do it. Number two, use raw videos versus polished content. We see a bunch of brands doing this. Truff does this a lot. They actually create, I mean, they also have very polished content, which we'll get into, but they use a lot of raw video. Raw video stands out because it's or more organic. It stands out in your feed versus a polished commercial-like type of content. It's something that people will skip over. And also, it creates a, an ability to speed things up, right? Having all this polished content is going to take a while, like setting up, hiring the, the videographer, editing the videos, and so forth. And if you could do that all on your iPhone, it's going to be much faster to scale and create much more ads. They did this in Snapchat and so forth. Again, more organic videos. Um, who else did this? Especially we saw even small brands. Like it's expensive to do that too, to do a photo that, shoot, to hire like models. Like it's gonna take probably a couple thousand dollars. People to wanna that. see real stuff. They exactly. don't wanna see this whole production and people are spending so much money, like 10, 20, $30,000 just yeah. for one freaking video. Really just from one, one, one video yep. that you could just do at home. And we've seen a bunch of brands do this. We saw Pure Vita. Uh, do this with their yeah. uh, phone photography. We've seen we see, we've seen a lot of big companies move that way too. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Shark. Um, Jim, Jim Shark. Shark. Jim, Jim Shark. Shark is moving that way to like more self content and things like that. Build and leverage direct relationship with your customers. And this is kind of an overall thing about e-commerce, which I love, is you get the opportunity when you're in e-commerce to basically set the narrative of your story and who you are as a brand. And this is a big advantage over a traditional brands that have to go through a distributor, then they have to go to, through a store, and then have to go through a retailer. And then the retailer puts it on the shelves and they basically, they tell the customer what your brand is, who you are, and usually it's probably gonna be a 50 brands just sitting next to each other on a shelf. And you can't, you can't really prove yourself over anyone else. So the great thing about e-commerce and about marketing through social platforms is you get to tell your customers and your potential customers what your brand stands for, what you stand for, and why they're a good fit for your brand. So you take advantage of this. And this is, we're in an age, probably this has started <clears throat> happening the last three years, is tell your story, be authentic, really take advantage of why people should align with your brand and buy your brand. And that's what we're seeing. We want to, we're seeing that buyers want to align with a brand rather than just buying some generic brand. We've seen that with Away as well, yep. with, with the luggage company. There was Warby no Parker. other D2C yep. uh, luggage company. There, there, there was, but there was no strong relationship like how Away did it. Warby Parker is another one. Allbirds is another one. All these brands have something in common, and you see that, that D2C relationship. And I, I talked about this in the past too. Like there's brands still that are being launched today. Their first goal is to get into retailers. 
That's what they're focusing on. Yep. Versus thinking about the direct consumer relationship, building a strong e-commerce platform, building a strong audience, putting out massive amounts of content, working with influencers and content creators to get your brand out there, to build that brand voice. That's where the brand building, the... the yeah. That's where I it lost happens. My, yeah, that's where, exactly, that's, that's where, where it happens. happens. I so mean, far, so. the only way to ever think like that is is if your product or your service is not easily transferable in terms of either shipping or like you can't give it to a client. Like if something huge or alcohol, alcohol can't be shipped to different states. So obviously you need to go through the, the AB beverage, who's the biggest distributor, to get your product sold. So that's the only way I would ever tell anyone to start your business and go through retailers or big box. Other than that, if your product can be easily shipped or your service can be sent to someone, e-commerce is the future. Agreed. But what about Babin, that that um, drink by Fat Jewish? Isn't that, wasn't that a DTC? I'm not sure, but I mean. Is it an alcohol? It's an alcohol. It's a rosé in a can. You, you will not, I got to see that. Only, I gotta say, some, I don't, I'm not only sure some that. states will allow you to send um, alcohol across uh, border lines. And then you have to also worry about age verification too. It's true. So it's Four? a hassle. Four. Create real reaction videos if you can. Uh, Truff, I'm sure they set up with some sort of pop-up or maybe just having people going outside with delicious food using the Truff hot sauce and recording the reactions from random people, like real reactions, not paid actors and so forth, which you can do as well, but it's much more uh, better when it's real, again, with real people. Like we live in uh, five minutes from New York City. It'd be great like if we had... We own this, sit, stand in Union Square, get a bunch of people trying out uh, chicken with truff sauce and capturing their footage. Obviously, you probably have to get some signed agreement. You have someone just say, hey, a waiver. We're going to put this on social media and so forth. But people love real reaction videos. Some of it's going to be funny, especially if you're going to, you know, you're standing um, in front of a university. You have a bunch of kids that they all love to be in, on social media. They you know, they, they, they're not afraid to show their face and so forth. So yeah. be creative. I mean, that those are great videos rather than just going on um, hiring models and, you know, coming up with a script and so forth. People love reaction videos. If you go on YouTube, you'll see a whole lot of reaction videos. Especially with food. Especially when you can, you can taste something and see a reaction. And then you're getting that consumer feedback. Like, mm -hmm. what? Those reviews. Those are exactly the reviews. So if you need to get reviews for your product, if you're a brand new product, go out there. Get people to try it, especially if you have a, uh, a product that people could taste samples, right? And record their reaction because that's a review right there. Yep, that's a great point. Number five, and this is something that the two Nicks said, which I never thought about, was a great point. Look at Amazon as more of a retailer versus a competitor. And this is a great little thing that me and Sean was, were actually discussing before is a lot of people see Amazon as they don't want to be on Amazon because they're going to get fees taken out. Uh, they don't want to be on Amazon because they think Amazon's going to probably steal their idea, possibly, or something like that. They're going to see the profit margins and, and create themselves. But Truff looks at it a different way. And the way they look at it is this. Amazon has their own loyal base of customers who probably all of our listeners, everyone out in the world is almost probably an Amazon customer, at least in the United States. And they are very loyal. When they want something, they're going to search for it on Amazon, and that's all they're going to do. So by leveraging truff is on amazon they have over fifteen thousand positive five-star reviews they are crushing it they're the number one hot sauce on amazon so they've they've learned that hey we're not going to be maybe be able to get a large majority of these people over to our website to purchase so let's leverage their network and let's have our product on amazon which has been a huge boost in revenue for them from what they were saying so it's a smart idea is don't look at amazon as a competitor like it's going to eat away at your sales be on that network and be accessible to their customer base because their customer base is very loyal. And they've even seen that their advertising and marketing on Amazon has even led over to higher sales on their site because people see it on Amazon, they see maybe a different flavors, they wanna see what the website's about. So it's even led to higher revenue on the website. It's just another channel to build more brand awareness. Exactly. Um, we've seen Goalie do that, the, the brand we talked about in the last previous podcast. You know, when people are searching, if they're not going to your brand, they've never heard of your brand, and you pop up on Amazon, you're building that awareness. Untuck it to the same thing. They didn't even yep. put all the products on Amazon, but they put a few up there yep. to build up that awareness. If you need to think of a strategy, maybe you don't want to post all your products. Maybe because Amazon does take a percentage of your sale, maybe sell bundles just on Amazon. So you, you yep. increase your AOV. What, that's what Goalie did. Goalie did. They didn't serve just one serving of that item. I think it was two or three. 
uh, baubles. Number six. Number six, think outside the box. I love this about Truff. Some of their content, I know I said in the previous one, you know, use your iPhone to create videos. Yes, you're gonna do that, but some of their content, they spend a lot of time creating, but it's actually gonna stand out. Uh, one of the recent posts I, I seen, it was an organic post and I'll probably leverage it for ads as well as the caption said, these NFTs are um, getting really crazy and it's literally someone with an iPhone, it's probably done with 3D motion or cinema for, uh, for these, these softwares that you could do. So you could hire, you gotta have someone that's skilled in uh, 3D motion or, or uh, motion graphics and so forth, which you can. And uh, you'll see the iPhone open up into like this matrix and then all of a sudden, you see Truffle coming out of it. Oh, I think they're in the Truffle app or something. You see Truffle coming out of it. Not only that, you've seen a lot of, I saw a, a bunch of other content on their ads where you see a guy that is, uh, it's like a, a character that they built up that looks like it's made up of hot sauce and it's jumping, it's like a big stack of burgers. So you see a video of you know going all the way up like a tower of a, a big tower burger and then right at the top is this guy it dives into the hot sauce and then bam, it, that, those are the type of stuff that captures people's attention. They love that. And especially right now, people love those type of creatives. You know, NFTs is really big right now and it's been around for a while, but it's really hot right now. This is just like another way of creating art. They're creating art. And you'll see some of, the, some of their other ads is just like, it's like a factory of them building truffle, but it's like, it looks like a, uh, from like the, the future or something. You see like this, these machines building truffle. It's like really cool of the, the process they're showing it and they're using ads to repurpose and so forth. I actually saw some of the, I think one of the Knicks, I confused which one, posted on his LinkedIn and there was so much, so much organic reach because people were loving the content. They were like, yo, these guys are the OGs of like creating content. So think outside the box. You see what's hot right now. If you could, um, you know, create something that really stands out, that's really funny, it's really unique, do it because that's how you're going to get more of a reach, especially in today's world, you know, with the iOS 14 update, you know, Facebook ads are getting really, really expensive, reaching the, the people that you want. You want people to share your video, your, your creatives. So you got to think smart in doing so, or you're going to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. if you don't. So awesome. Great points. I hope you enjoyed guys. Our review of Truff. That was episode 42, guys. If you like this episode, if you're listening to this iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, give us a five-star review. Please share this with any other entrepreneur that would help them their business as well. If you have any questions, you could tweet at mscopac or at Sean underscore Azari. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave your questions down below and we will see you next week. Ciao.